Hi, Nick from Australian Native Bee here. Today we're going to be making trap hives or lure hives for catching stingless bees out of the wild. Um, this is not something that's done in Australia very often. It's quite hard to do. So if you do go ahead and make a trap and nothing moves into it, don't uh, fall on your knees and cry. Uh, it's quite difficult and that's part and parcel why I'm making this video because the more people trying it and working out uh, a method that works for them the more we're going to be able to share and refine uh, a way that everybody can catch their own stingless bees. <clears throat> uh, the basic method in South America to do this is to dissolve uh, bee resins in alcohol and they, over there they use plastic bottles. I'll be using bamboo uh, just because I think it's a little bit more environmentally friendly and for a hot climate I want something that's a little bit thicker on the walls than a uh, bottle. But um, have a watch and I hope you enjoy and I will we'll be publishing my findings if any bees do move into uh, these trap hives over the next few years. The first thing you will need to do is find some suitable bamboo. I chose this bamboo because it has really thick walls on it. I believe it is giant green bamboo, but I can't say that for sure. After cutting the bamboo down into manageable sections, I took it home and drop sawed the ends nice and flush so I had closed sections of bamboo. Out in the workshop now. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to glue these uh, plywood circles on the tops of the bamboo. Uh, you can see I've put a 12 mil hole in there. The reason why I'm going to glue them on is because as bamboo dries out, if you don't stop the end grain from drying out really quickly, you're going to get bamboo that looks like this. And those cracks will continue down the side and then you'll have a big problem and the bees won't want to move in so i'm going to be using gap filler if you've ever stuck this on something and then tried to pull it off when it's dry it's really hard to get off um, and it's non-toxic so that'll be good for the bees but basically it's going to stop two things it's going to stop the water sitting in there and the main thing is that the bamboo doesn't dry out in that position uh, once I've done that, I'm going to cut up some metal strapping and that will go over the top of them so that they can be hung. Okay guys, so we're back here a night later. All the straps are on the hives, all the lids are on the glued onto the hives um, and sanded it off flush. Um, I ran out of straps so I did some wire ones as well. Uh, I pre-drilled all these screws. You don't want to be driving screws into bamboo uh, when it's green because it will split at that point. So all holes are pre-drilled and all holes are on the up angle. So these wires actually head, head upwards on the up angle in there. Um, and yeah, you can see them. All the tops have been given a, a light, light coat of long lasting oil and later on what I'll do is drill a six probably a six mil hole in the base on the edge of these because that's the way the node in the bamboo grows and I just am going to do that because I don't want any water if water does get in there to uh, prevent the bees from going in there so that's what I'm going to do um, I'm also going to put a little blob of silicon on this center hole because I don't want that there either so there you go all right uh, here I have four different types of resins taken from different locations inside stingless beehives and we will be testing all of these different types of resins to see which one works the best here in Australia all right we're back in the workshed now today I took the resins out I put them in the Sun um, and Lo and behold, they combined chemically. And um, 
I don't want that. So I'm going to put them sitting in a pot with some water in it and heat up the containers with the lids loosened a little. Then I'm going to take each resin across here and as you can see I've got a range of different size hives. Each hive in order of size will receive the same resin and so we will have different size hives trying the different types of resins and we'll be able to determine which hive is the most attractive size and I'll take measurements of that later. So we'll have the resin and we'll have the size of the hive. So basically I've got a funnel in there. Remove the funnel and put my thumb over it and shake it around and then label the hive. As you can see here. Here's what we finished up with, sealed at the top, got a 7mm uh, hole in the bottom that goes through inside. And one other thing I wanted to show you, this is a one of the many tips that Alan Beale told me before he died. And that is, if you leave a perfectly round hole when you're providing a nest for stingless bees to move in, you will get... Uh, mud dauber wasps or solitary bees nesting in it but if you press a little bit of stingless bee wax over the hole you will get bees moving in so that's interesting uh, don't leave a round hole put something there if you haven't got stingless bee wax just make it so it's not round and that's it hive traps ready to go Touch the sunlight